Hello and welcome to the Reapers. So we had a great response for our videos that we did for introducing SAM systems to you and the video that we did where we were introducing um, air-to-air -air missiles, even though we hardly even touched on the matter at that point. We'll have to do a better one about air-to-air -air missiles. Uh, and we have, we've had requested from you bombs, different types of bombs. Now you think of a bomb, it's just a little thing that drops off a plane. In reality, it's hugely complicated and variant. There are hundreds, maybe even over a thousand types of bombs in real life. Now, we're not going to cover all of them because we can't. What we're going to cover is uh, the majority of the types of bombs that are available to us in our simulator, DCS. And we hope we're all going to learn a lot today, certainly including me. Um, so all the ones we're shown here uh, should be in, in DCS. And there are a lot more, obviously, but we can't go through all of them or this will be a five hour video. So, Sherman, let's get ready to kick some bottom. Uh, now, right, so where do we start? So the very first thing that's, that's kick off um, near the top right, we're going to do the basic Mark 82, Mark 83, Mark 84. So I've got a Mark 82 bomb here. It is just a packaged bunch of explosives there. It has a detonator on the front, a detonator in the tail, some static tail fins so it drops nice and cleanly. And that's it, basically. Um, um, uh, so, what is these just American or are they NATO? Do we think? Do Mirage? So NATO, these they? are American built, but they are used um, by NATO forces, as far as I'm aware. Essentially, um, main purpose is essentially to replace the older series of bombs. For example, the oldest um, U.S. general purpose bomb in DCS is the M117, available for the Mustang, the yep. Saber, and the F5. Yeah, so it's this modernized, standardized version of, of what we call an iron bomb or a dumb bomb, basically. Okay, so that's it, really. Mark 82, which is a standardized 250-pound bomb, I think it is. Mark 83, 500-pound bomb. And Mark 84, Big Bertha, is a 1,000-pound so, bomb. So, the weights are listed as follows. The Mark 81 is a 250-pound bomb. Okay. The Mark 82 is a 500-pounder. Mark 83, 1,000-pounder. Mark 84 is 2,000-pounder. Hey, Firma, I think I must have been thinking of kilos there, but I stand corrected. Okay, that's fine. Um, now, one interesting thing to bring up at this point is um, if you're flying in an aeroplane... Excuse me. <coughs> if you're flying in an aeroplane in DCS... Um, you, you have to arm your bombs and you have to arm nose or tail or nose and tail. These are the detonators at the front and the back, obviously. Um, what's all that about then? Why would you have a detonator in, in a nose and in a tail? Or a fuse? Well, Sorry, there are two you. reasons. One is safety because if you want to be damn sure that the bomb will only arm at a certain point, you need to make sure that those fuses arm at the correct time. Two is delayed fusing because sometimes for, say, a bunker busting weapon, you want the bomb to penetrate it to the ground before it detonates. So you need to select the correct fuse and set up the timing of said fuse correctly. And that's what having the two fuses are. In addition, because these uh, Mark 80 general purpose bombs are modular, allowing for guidance systems, sometimes I know at least one or the other fuse can be removed in order to make room for the guidance kit. Roger, cool, gotcha. Right, okay, and obviously the fuse that we were talking about, that detonates the main charge, which, you know, which is the bomb. Okay, so that's fine. Um, uh, then we have a modification called a snake eye. Now, I know you have snake eyes for Mark 82s. You may also have snake eyes for Mark 81s, 83s, 84s. I really can't remember. But in this so one, it's Mark 82. The retarded version... Well, the Mark 82 snake eye is considered what's known as a retarded version. Now, that's not like me retarded. It's Most. like as in the trajectory of the bomb is retarded. And in this case, it is done by what's known as retarding pedal petals when the bomb is released these open up and they cause additional drag allowing for the bomb to slow its um, fall rate and thus uh, basically lose speed quickly yep you also have others such as the um, mark 82 air which we have which uses a ballet which is essentially just a little shoot are you firm? And uh, if you're wondering, oh, why would I want to retard my bombs for weight? It's actually incredibly important. If you're flying in, in say, a Viggen or a Harry or something, the, where you're going to be bombing very low altitude along, say, a line of trucks or something, and you and you, you let these bombs off at, a, at an altitude of 100 feet, if it was like a bomb like this, Mark 82, it would fall down quickly, hit the ground, explode, and blow your own aeroplane up. 
So if you were going to do a load drop like that, you would use Snake Eyes or the other one that you just said, uh, the air version. So as soon as the bombs leave the plane, they retard and they slowly drop to the ground, allowing the plane to get away before the blast happens. So incredibly important for low altitude bombing. Right, anything about to the 82 to 84 series or the 81 to 84 series? It's noted here that on uh, on Wikipedia, the 83 and the 84s also get uh, balut versions, uh, dragged versions of the bomb, but they are not available currently in DCS. A firm, right. So we won't cover anything that's not in DCS because that's all we're interested in at the moment. That's what we use. Okay, we're going to jump on to GBUs next. Remember, what does GBU stand for? Guided Bomb Unit? Guided Bomb Universal? Guided bomb unit, yes. So all a GBU is is essentially it's what they would call a guidance kit for the uh, Mark eighty series of bombs. So you literally stick these to the front and rear of the bomb, and the front unit will typically act as the guidance kit, and the rear of the unit will act as the steering. Now I believe the Israelis also have a guided system of their own which is relatively cheap but i forget what the acronym for it was roger right so for instance now i i'm just going to make this up as i go but for instance this gb gbu 10 uh, i should say all of these we've got here the ones i've shown in my picture are available in dcs including the big weird gbu 151 so we'll go through that in a minute but um yeah so 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 for instance this gbu 10 could be just a mark 82 which is remember a, a universal modular bomb uh, used by the United States, and they bung this tail, they sc essentially screw this tail section on, which is a movable fins, and they screw essentially this um, guiding system, this laser guiding system at the front, and that can guide the bomb. Um, so most of these, I think, are laser guided, aren't they? GBU-10, I think, is laser guided. GBU-16, laser guided. What well, should I say before I go on? And, and for instance, this GBU-16 might be the same idea, except it might be a Mark 84 bomb, a bigger bomb, something like so, that. So, according to this, the GBU-10 is the £2,000 variant. Okay, so it's the Mark 84. So the GBU-10 there is, uh, it happens to be the Mark 84 variant, £2,000. Okay, that's fine. Uh, now, so the GBU-10, the 16, the 24, the 27, and the GBU-28, i.e. the ones that look kind of the same, I think they're all laser-guided. Um, uh, Which ones? I stand to put myself in trouble here. The, the 10, the 16, the 24, the 27, and the 28. So all of them, yes, apart, from the J, apart from the JDAM and apart from the visual one uh, near the top, I think they're all laser guided, aren't they? Yes, if you look at the picture, you'll see there's kind of like a little weird um, pointy end mm. sticking out the nose. That is essentially a laser spot search system for the bomb. It will continuously run a laser spot search for a laser code that is specified on the ground in dcs for the a10c when you're on the ground you can do it inside the sms page for the specific pylon however that is not realistic and the way you're supposed to do it is on the ground when you load up the bombs roger understood and i know we're not going to get a comprehensive answer for this something i've not, never understood is how the laser system works so very briefly my a10 is flying about right and I point my laser beam down at a target and it hits that target, let's say it's a tank and then it bounces off that target as what, radiation I suppose a form of radiation and then somehow when I drop my GBU-10 it, it picks up that radiation and hits the target I've never understood how that works it is, uh, uh, Hang on, which uh, bomb's this? Well, any of the laser guided ones How do they work? You fire a laser beam at something but then that's going to bounce off that thing and and bounce back up into space so a laser receiver is essentially an electro uh, optical scan that's searching for the infrared signature of the laser code it picks up its um, position and tries to calculate based on where it sees it and its guest range and then tries to basically steer itself onto that point of impact it's what one would call semi-active laser range homing okay well if any in the very basic sense of it so um, not quite beam riding, but you're trying to impact the point that the laser is currently at. Cool. If anyone know, in the comments knows the physics of that, I would be interested because I am a physics, not boffin, but uh, uh, enthusiast. Um, we, all, I, we always read my comments, even though I, if I don't get time to reply them. So that would be uh, very useful information for us. Right, uh, we must crack on though. JDAM, GBU-38. Now, it's the same idea, isn't it? It's a Mark 82 or 4 or something with a kit bolted on. Would you like to go through JDAM? 
So the JDAM is the Joint Directed Attack Munition, as I believe what that uh, stands for. It is a GPS guided unit. What that means is you have a point targeted within your computer system. Uh, you fly over it in the CCRP when you've designated the impact point. Once you hit the release point, the bomb will be released and its own. I'm not sure whether there's a GPS unit or an INS unit, which will essentially guide it onto the point of impact without any further input from your aircraft. So unlike a laser designation where you need to keep the laser on, once you've released it, that bomb is going to go no matter what you do. Mm -hmm. and, th and this is, from her first hand, this is beautiful. Recently learned the A-10C, and it's so easy to use. You just pick a point in space, drop the bomb roughly uh, over that point, and it'll just guide. You don't need to worry about lasers, laser codes, problems interrupting the laser with your wing. You know, you just drop it, and it's almost like cheat mode. Absolutely beautiful thing. Well, if you like dropping bombs on people, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah, they would typically be used on A10s, F15Es, FA18s, and F14Ds. Roger that. Cool. Next, GBU15. Uh, the reason I'd like to cover it is because it's a weird looking. It's obviously got some kind of visual or IR sensor in the front, and we do have it in DCS. So something carries that weird thing. What do you make of a GBU15? Right, I'm looking at this thing now. Manual guidance via radio TV guidance. Ah, how interesting. Oh, so this is a TV it. guided bomb. We've got to use it. We've got to use it. It's going to be awesome. Now, what I'm trying to figure out here, because typically there's two types of TV guided precision weapons. You either have one that's obviously guided from the TV of, say, a targeting pod, or a TV signal is actually sent directly to the pilot's display all the way down into the point of impact until obviously the bomb exploded mm -hmm. so there's no signal to receive anymore. Absolutely fascinating. So it's almost like a bit like a, um, a tow, like a tow, but a bomb, isn't it? Uh, no, that a tow is a very different weapon. A tow is you're always looking down the site and you're using it in sack loss. In this, you're looking down the actual front of the bomb. How int oh, yeah, I get you. Understood. Okay, how interesting. Right, we're going to do that because it sounds the best thing in the world. Okay, we must crack on, though. CBU. What does CBU stand for? Cluster... Cluster, cluster bomb, bomb unit. Unit? Right, there you go. Simple as that. Uh, I know Sherman loves them. I don't know a great deal about them. I've got a couple of pictures I scavenged off the internet. CBU-97, CBU-100. So, yeah. there's a whole range uh, of I them. I might like them, but most human rights groups tend to hate them because they have a tendency, A, to injure civilians, B, leave what's known as unexploded ordnance behind. So In fact, the majority of world's nations have actually signed a treaty mm -hmm. um, prohibiting the use of cluster bombs, but the United States is not one of them. Hmm, interesting. Okay, that sounds controversial, uh, so I better not touch that, but... Uh, so there's a whole range of them I know it is in DCS, the CBU 97, 100, 103, 105. What does the number mean? Is it just the variant or does it mean it's something? The, it's the designation of the weapon, typically um, designating, uh, well, but from the 97 and up, I think it mostly he designates um, caliber. But hang on, let me double check. I was, hoping, I was hoping it was going to say how many bomblets were in it. I thought that would be quite cool. 100 bomblets. Let me see here. I suspect it's mainly fusing some of them. Explode on the target. Some of them explode when they just leave the plane. Some of them explode at a predetermined height. Blah blah blah. Well, blah, blah. I mean, on that note, the CBU ninety seven is very unique in that it releases a cluster, yeah, uh, several clusters and parachutes. Those clusters then shoot upwards, shooting out spinning copper tubes, which have thermal imaging guidance systems. Wow. They look for vehicle heat signatures and then fire molten cop copper in a top down attack onto the vehicles. So that's amazing. So this is almost like a smart smart bomb. So you drop this roughly yeah, over so a target. It has it has ten BLU one oh eight bomblets. Right, and they shoot up into the air, and they've got they've got a little brain inside them, I guess. And, they, and that brain looks for something to blow up, something, a nice R signal. Literally just a thermal seeker. Oh, terrifying. Imagine being in a tank, and or even, or anything, yeah, tank, and one of these is coming overhead. You don't want to be there. Absolutely mental. And then there's the other variants, I guess, so some of them are intelligent, some of them are dumb, some of them are just going to, you know, drop out hundreds of little bomblets and yes, stuff. it's also worth noting that there's another um, variant if you attach... Uh, what's called a wind corrected munitions dispersal guidance kit it's quote converts it into a precision guided weapon called the cbu 105 cbu 105 precision guided cluster wow now that's getting cheap mode now right okay i didn't know any of this existed so this is all interesting stuff as well just shows the depth 
the ADTSs and just be the world how many bomb types there are. And this is like pretty half a percent of what exists out there. Crazy. Yes, so right. CBU 100. We actually know this one better as the Mark 20 Rock Eye. Ah, oh, that's interesting. This is a more conventional cluster munition in that you drop it at and at a certain altitude, the main bomblet will actually the bomb will actually separate its container out, and several high explosive bomblets will proceed to shower the target area. Very good against light skinned vehicles and infantry. Not very good against heavy armor. Yeah, so so CBU ninety seven good for taking out tanks and heavy armor. This good for get, taking out. So the the di different designations all uh, what I get from it is good better for taking out different targets, uh, different types of yes. targets. Okay, that's fine. So, for example, the Hornet uses these a lot, and uh, there's actually a screenshot here of a rock eye opening with all two hundred and forty seven oh, bomblets. God. Oh, cool. All right, well, you internet guys can go and look up those cool pictures, but that's pretty awesome. Okay, fine. Um, we must move on, though, because we do have to get things done. Next, now, I can't remember who drops this, but the... Uh, to continue on, uh, the CBU-100 is the... Um, the CBU-100 and the CBU-99 here are allegedly used against armoured vehicles. Right, okay. Well, we kind of have to learn all these variants, don't we? Because we use the bloody things. Um, oh, we will, yes. Probably the reason we've been uh, lacking on a lot of our ground attack is that we're dropping anti-personnel clusters on tanks and stuff. I wouldn't be at all surprised if we're using them wrong. Um, mm, cool. All right, we've got to crack on, Sherman. BLU-27 and the BLU range. Uh, can't remember. Uh, I know they're a cluster of some type. What do you get for a BLU-27 and what drops it? If I put it up on YouTube, uh, napalm bomb and lots of footage of napalm from the Vietnam War. Wow, okay, so BLU-27 turns out as a napalm bomb. So in our current version of DCS, I'm guessing this will be probably the Sabre or something that drops this down. Was it, was, was it two thirds of a, no, half a ton or something? 750 pounds, we think, of napalm, which is a mix of petrol and jelly, I think, something like that, wasn't it? It's essentially uh, petroleum, which is thickened with some chemical agent, the name of which I do not recall, in order to make it, well, A, choke out the oxygen, and B, um, and B, uh, cause it to stick to stuff, and that's what makes uh, napalm so horrific, is that it sticks to anything. It's stomach-churningly disgusting bomb, but... I guess they all are. They're all designed to kill humans at the end of the day, but that's a particularly nasty one, so I don't like that. I'm not going to drop it. Actually, I want to see what they look like, but I'm not going to drop them on humans. Right, anyway, uh, we must crack on. Uh, so that was interesting. For the FAB series. So, I don't know what FAB stands for in Russian, but my understanding of the FAB series is that they're essentially a bit like the Russian version of the Mark, American Mark series. Uh, they go from 100 kilos to 1,500 kilos, I believe. So, wow, 1,500 kilos is 3,000 pounds or more. 3,200 pounds. So um, you get uh, this little tinker here, I guess would be the 100 kilo, and I guess this would be the 150 kilo, and I guess this would be the 1,500 yes. kilo. So the Russians uh, name their bombs based on payload in kilograms. So if FAB is your general high explosive. Yeah, Roger. Uh, it's, it's just the same as these, really. Now, I'm not sure if they're modular and convertible to GBU type thing. I don't think they are from what I've read about the Russian bombs, but again, we're not experts, so we'll leave that out there for you guys to decide. So if you're drop, dropping dumb bombs in a flanker and DCS, you'll be dropping these babies. Right, that's fine, that's that. Next, uh, a little bit more complicated, Sherman, the CAB series, uh, Russian KAB. Uh, these are the GBUs of the Russians, I believe, and you get TV type sensor or EO type sensor and uh, uh, laser sensor and GPS sensor. I think if you look on, the, my picture that I made, the E, mm -hmm. the E variant we got there, which is probably going to end up being GPS. The L ver variant is going to be the laser, and um, the TK and KR are going to be either EO or you know um, some sort of some sort of electric, some sort of optical. Yes, uh, I oh, know. Sorry, that sorry, it, uh, sorry. I've just found it says a key here. Right, KR equals E, e electric optical correlator guidance. Um, TK equals mm -hmm. electric optical data link guidance. L equals semi-active laser. So, so this L is, is, is the laser is the same as the GBU laser paveway type, by the sounds of it. Uh, the mm -hmm. SE is a satellite inertial guidance. So that is the GPS and the INS. Um, so that's basically a JDAM. 
that's a JDAM. That's a GBU laser guided bomb. Um, I don't fully understand the EO corrector guidance. So um, a, a correlator and data link. Uh, so... so basically, I think how it works is if it's a data link, I drop the bomb. A TV display is now shown on my sensor from the bomb. I then steer the bomb using the steering controls in the plane. Well, not the flight controls, obviously, but the weapon aiming controls. The bomb will then correct its path to where I've aimed it until it reaches impact and the sensor shuts off because it exploded. Right. As opposed to correlator, which is you aim at something on the ground, you lock it up with your sensor, you release, and the sensor tries to keep track of that all the way till impact. Like a Maverick? Uh, yes, and the Maverick's um, predecessor, which I think is actually in this list later. Right, how interesting. Okay, so that is, it looks like, the set of Russian uh, guided missions. I've never dropped them because I never even knew they existed. They're all there, they're all to be used. So that's something we've got to get into. We've got to get into using this cab series. And you get some big boys. Look, 100, um, 1,500 kilos, two, over 3,000 pounds, absolutely giant bombs, guided bombs. So that's something I promise we will look into, as well as the cool GBU-15 and some more look at the oh, and a 27 and I just need all of them now so cool right anyway let's crack on let's go down Beluga heard this a lot what is it it's Mirage I know it's French yeah uh, no it is it's French okay maybe it is French but I do know the US Air Force also actively uses it but its primary purpose is a runway bomb ah interesting yeah you drop it down a runway it I'm mean, hang on let me check this out a bit like the one yeah, okay. yeah, okay, I admit defeat to this one. It is a French-built cluster uh, bomb designed for a runway bomb. Okay, and does it dispense or is it droppable? I'm guessing it's droppable. Must be droppable. So, the Beluga carries 152 66mm bomblets, which are of three types. General purpose fragmentation for use against vehicles, parked aircraft and dumps, high explosive against armored fighting vehicles, it's addiction for use to get to airfields, harbour and marshalling yards. So basically, some of these are just general purpose explosions, some are anti-vehicle, and some are designed to hit a runway and then fuck up the runway. Fascinating. Well, I've got the Mirage now, so I'd like to drop a Beluga at some point and see what it looks like. That's cool. Okay. I would, I would hasten to add that currently the Beluga's uh, munition is work in progress at DCS, so it's not quite oh, right. that. right. Like the Vigan's... Um begins one okay okay fine uh right let's go left iab now i couldn't work out what it was when i was doing my research putting this picture together i, I it almost said it was a phosphorus dispenser or something can you check it out and see what you come up with well there's only one page here and it appears to be in polish but oh, according to google translate it was a prototype weapon the bomb is filled with 242 kilograms of mixed liquid fuel and and phosphorus of some type oh. after activating the igniter the explosion creates essentially a um a white phosphorus explosion right so this is what anti-personnel well here's the thing white phosphorus can um white phosphorus in this both anti-personnel and anti-vehicle because of the way that the white phosphorus works it's uh Rather than a high explosive, high pressure wave explosion, it causes a low pressure wave explosion, which has a different kind of lethal effect. Right, so we have this IB500. I'm going to have to go and use it now. I don't know even if it was Russian. It's going to be on the Russian side, isn't it? So I'm going to have to go it's and drop a it. Soviet weapon. So, so I'm going to have to go and drop it on something and see what the deuce it is. But how interesting. Yeah, but here's the thing. Thermobaric, it's basically a thermobaric weapon. Oh, using white right. Bombs. Yeah, I get you now. And thermal bio weapons are highly nasty. You're right. Okay, so that's something we're going to go and play with then. Right, next, probably my favourite, I think it has to be. Uh, no less disgusting, but it is the KMGU Russian Dispenser Series. So, a kind of a cluster bomb, but a little different. It stays attached to the aircraft. You don't drop it. You can probably jettison it if you want, but it stays attached so, to the yeah. aircraft. So, yeah, technically it's not a bomb, it's a dispenser. Mm. And essentially, you keep your finger on the trigger, and just hundreds of these small bomblets just drop out, and it just obliterates an area. And it's horrifically effective against mm, light armor. Not units. exactly. So, it either contains um, 96 um, high explosive uh, mines, 
96 anti-tank mines or 156 smaller PFM S mines. Mines are. Now that's interesting because um, in DCS they act as cluster munitions uh, rather than high explosive mines, but according to this they are in fact mines. Wow, so they come out and they don't just drop directly down, they're spread out over uh, several hundred feet so it covers like a football field area and just destroys anything with it. Within yeah, I can see why this weapon would uh, basically be a violation of mm. many mine lane laws. Yeah, and I know there's different, I know there's anti armor and there's anti personnel variants, so that's fine. Okay, ah, something peaceful, finally, that doesn't murder and melt people. It is the LUU 2 dropped by, I know the A10 can drop it, and I, I think. And, um, well, actually, I'm not even going to say that. I, 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 I'm, it gets dropped by something in the air. But it's not. So for the LU222 is essentially just a flare dispenser. Yay. You drop it out, a parachute opens up, and a uh, light flare pops up in the sky. It's beautiful. We've, we've used it before. We've had Vigans dropping this or similar things to help us in night missions. We don't do a lot of night missions nowadays because our viewers get just complain at us and whinge at us um, if it's anything other than perfect lightness. But when we do, or when we did do the night mission... To be fair, that's more YouTube's fault than anything. That's correct. Um, but yes, uh, but they're extremely useful in doing night missions. You can light up a whole area of hundreds of feet, hundreds of metres across, and um, yes. it turns it into day. So it's very, very, very bright stuff. And what, what, that said, you only need like one or two to illuminate an area. Yeah. So don't go dropping six, you're just going to tank your and performance. Fair. And you get them in armour as well, which is quite cool. Right, let's crack on! Next, interesting looking beast, an AGM 6-2. Um, now, when I was looking at it in, whoops, doing my research, um, I thought it was a Maverick, but it's not a Maverick, it's a bomb. It's got no motor on it. As I said before, this is the predecessor to the Maverick, and yes, it is essentially a, uh, a terminal velocity Maverick, the Walleye, originally introduced in oh. Vietnam. This thing is essentially just a Maverick without a motor. Right, so it's so it's got a TV camera in it. That's right, isn't it? TV camera mm -hmm. in it, and uh, that displays on your uh, you know your schwal, whatever you call it, for an, for an American one, your TV screen, and you guide it in essentially. You block it onto a target and fire it in. How interesting! Well, that's another thing. Yeah, uh, I didn't know existed in DCS. We've got to go and try it out. Got to get the wall eyes dropping. So that's interesting. Okay, next we're going to go to. I'm just double checking the system for guidance. It's a yeah. TV guided yeah, bomb, TV guide. according to this. Ava, cool. Okay, and next we're going to go to our most difficult one. Uh, this was one I found very confusing. A BTAB series, a huge series of bombs, B E T A B, um, and I couldn't really work out what they were. I thought they were might be cluster. I thought they then I thought they might be phosphorus. So I'm trying to work out what this series is. There's a few of them. Right. So easier. this is for the BTAB High 500. It is a concrete piercing bomb of 500 kilograms designed to penetrate and destroy reinforced concrete structures uh, including bunkers and damaged runways right so we think they're infrastructure bombs then is that what we think mm -hmm. they are right so a whole series of infrastructure bombs then right so we now know that if we want to blow up because uh, i kept i kept i've kept saying before we, we always seem to set the wrong bombs for the wrong mission and we stuff doesn't get blown up that's probably because we're taking the wrong bloody bombs so if we want to blow up that bridge don't take i don't know whatever this thing here take one of these and to get the right yeah the you right might problem. punch a hole in the bridge but you'll more than likely just make the river deeper Nodra, okay uh, then a nasty nasty bastard below an obab an odab 500 now i had a quick research when i was putting this together it appears to be the thing in syria that they're dropping on the um on the rebels uh they 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 drop it off a um, flogger or something a whopping great parachute comes out immediately and it just drops down and sails down to earth innocently until it hits something and blows up. Is that what you get? A whopping great parachute. Alright, so when I look up ODAB on Wikipedia, it returns thermobaric weapon. Oh, no, not again. Yep, that looks about right according to the um, cutaway picture I've got. Alright, so many Russian munitions have thermobaric. Uh, let's see. The ODAB 500 PM and PMV unguided bombs carry a 190 kilo fuel air explosive. And, and what's so? Yeah. And what's what's this thermobaric then? Why is it better than a high explosive charge? The thing with high explosive is the knockback and the force of the shrapnel is what kills you there. Whereas thermobaric, a it sets things on fire. B the low frequency essentially tears anything in the near vicinity apart. Uh, that's nice. In fact, I'm on the thermobaric weapons page. Let me find out exactly 
what causes it. A thermobaric's bomb effect yields require the most appropriate combination for here on. Thermobaric weapons apply the principles underlying accidental unconfined vapor cloud explosions, which include those from dispersions of flames, dusts, and droplets. Previously, such explosions were most often encountered in flour mills and their storage mm. containers later in coal mines. Now most commonly in partially full or empty oil tankers. So the basic principle is you have a partly empty space with an explosive fuel, which is then ignited to p perform a massive explosion. Nice. I, I kind of get the point because a uh, high explosive bomb, the, all of the chemical action is being done in that point where the bomb was. This spreads the chemical action in a big cloud, first of all, and then ignites it. So your chemical action is happening over a huge area rather than the tiny area. Kind of yeah, so you can see how it is, um, yeah, slightly inhumane as well because you're basically setting someone on fire and I, blowing them yeah. up. Yeah, well, I was thinking about that. I was thinking about the napalm. I think everything here is, you know, do you really care whether you get killed by an ODAB or a GBU? I don't think any of them. Anyway, we're in DCS. DCS is good though. It's a simulator. It's all peace and love. Uh, so, so yes, welcome DCS. We're in DCS. No yeah, actual yeah, people were yeah. harmed during the exactly. making of our videos. We're, 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 so all of the real Unless versions, they were triggered. All of the real versions of these are bad, horrible things. Don't encourage them. But the DCS, you are allowed to encourage. Uh, because we're just play play time having some fun and it's good good yes. for everyone's brains yes in, in all seriousness um gamers know the difference between real world violence in a video game yes that's right um it's good the right place to get your rage out all right anyway um now we're going to go to the rbk series i believe this is russian now i think in my limited research is this is the uh, a Russian equivalent of the cbu um you know the 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 cluster bomb so you drop the bomb the bomb at some point explodes, well, you know, separates into lots of little droplets. And I've got a 3D cut cutaway I found here, and then those 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 droplets, uh, those bomblets, go and do their thing. Um, I'm not right, sure. So unfortunately, there's no Wikipedia of items mm. on these, but they are listed as cluster bombs on yeah, Wikipedia. Yeah, I'm pretty. I don't think we have to go into this. I think there's going to be lots of variants, and then we get lots of variants in DCS. Uh, this is going to be similar to the CBU series. It's just the Russian equivalent, because obviously we've got the Soviet side and the American side, you know, throughout the last God knows how many years, tens of years. So, yep, that's fine. Uh, right, before we go on to Big Daddy, uh, let's go to the bottom, the cheeky little one I couldn't get to the bottom of, P50T. Um, I think it might have been the same as, similar as the IAB500, i.e. a phosphorus uh, explosive thermobaric. Active training bomb. No, no, no. So it's no, basically no. a training bomb. No, so this is P-50 Tango. It's got explosive yes. explosives there. And I've looked it up here, and according to these Russian sites, it is a Russian training bomb. Mm. Okay, Internet, clarify that for me, please, because I, I was in my limited research. I found thought it was explody. So, all right, we'll see. Uh, the SAB 100s. Now, I'm not sure what's special about them. Um, they're just 100 kilo bombs, but I, I, I just found them interesting because you'd launch them from these. Um, uh, these uh, these bomb dispensers. So so on a flanker, you might have you'll have multiple of these dispenser units. A bit like you're doing a vegan, and on each. So everything I'm seeing here indicates that these bombs are flares. SAB one hundred. Yes. Uh, really? Yes, they are both in DCS and in real world. There are references to <laughs> SC twenty five dropping quote unquote SAB one hundred mm flare bombs. Okay, well that remains, that remains to be decided. I thought they were... I mean, it did, wouldn't make sense if they are flare bombs. We think SAB 100 might be flare bombs there. Um, anyway, the thing I was actually trying to point out was that maybe it's not the SAB 100, maybe it's the FAB 100s that get launched like this. You can have these racks and each can carry, I think, six of these these 100 kilo yes, bombs. Yes, I, I was going to say, I'm fairly certain there's a FAB 100s. FAB 100s, yeah. And that flanker or whatever has got it can carry like multiple, like, I don't know, four or six of these racks and dropping tens of these bombs i've seen flankers drop tens of these bombs down at once i just found mm -hmm. that interesting you're almost you're almost your planes becoming almost a uh, a cluster munition dispenser like this one here except each each uh, bomblet is a full-grown 200 pound bomb like a mark 81 absolutely crazy amount of power those things can you know it's like a whole it's like a whole air fleet of b-17s you know under mm -hmm. one, one thing anyway that's why i found it interesting 
And finally, Big Daddy, uh, the RN24 and the RN28. Now, uh, this is a nuclear bomb, which is ugh, even worse than everything put together, but uh, also pretty cool and some interesting engineering physics. Um, now, is this, Sherman, because I haven't looked into this, is this a... Uh, a uranium fission bomb or a hydrogen fusion bomb? I'm guessing it'll be fission low yield. Possibly I'm two, looking maybe for even, it now. Possibly even 2.8 kilotons or 28 kilotons, uh, which will be the yield, if, uh, the equivalent of TNT explosive. We're just going to have a look now. Yeah, hang on. So the problem is... Uh, let me see. This it'll just be interesting to know if it's shock unfused or... Because um, uh, skinny bombs are usually shock unfused or spherical fuse. It'd be quite interesting for the viewers. Right, for what was that designation again? Romeo November 28. Right, so the Romeo November isn't listed on um, Wikipedia nonsense. amongst them, but essentially it's an equivalent to what would be the Mark 24 nuclear bomb that the US had. Lols. Uh, the basic it? principle is that both the US and the Soviet Union explored multiple ways of implementing nuclear weapons, both in ground warfare, strategic warfare, air defense, etc. I, I have a lot of interest in nuclear theory, so I'm going to come and have to have a little look. Right, so I have a quick, I've had a quick search around the internet. I can't find any useful information on the RN-28. Uh, I would be interested in learning about it if anyone knew about um, the type of fusing, the type of bomb. Um, and its yield, and obviously, I don't think any been dropped, but it's you know uh, its lifespan and where it's been you know dropped from and, and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Interesting, right? I think we're done, Sherman. It took all day, but we got through the bombs and DCS. Anything to add before we sign off? Uh, not really. Just that there'll probably be more bombs to come in the future. It depends on what planes we get. A firm. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed that, and I hope you learned a lot from that. Um, feel free to make corrections and put in any additional information. Otherwise, we'll see you later and uh, don't get bombed, I suppose. Goodbye.